Hi, I'm James and I failed as a freelancer. Let me tell you why and hopefully you can avoid making those same mistakes. So the first and probably the biggest mistake I made was not treating the job like a business, like I was a business person. I treated it like a cool hobby that I was trying to make into a job. And that is the wrong approach. You need to go, if you're going in and you're doing this seriously, if you're starting your freelance journey, treat it like a business. Go in with the attitude that you need to plan your time, plan your days, schedule ahead of time, make sure you're making time for editing, shooting, all of those things, especially when you're pricing yourself up. You need to think about how much time you spend in planning, how much time you spend in travel, how much time you spend in just thinking about the shoots that you're gonna do and, and plotting out how it's gonna look. Do you spend time storyboarding? Do you spend time writing out notes? Do you spend time in meetings with your client? You should be charging them for all, those, all that time. I wasn't. I charged them for the shoot and maybe the edit a little bit. And that was a huge mistake. I wasn't treating it like a business. If you go to a business and say, hey, can you do a video for me? They're gonna come back and say, well, yeah, we need to, this time to plan. We need this time to do the shoot. We need this time to edit. We need this time to storyboard. They're gonna charge you for days and days and days. And where you might go in as a freelancer and think, well, it's just a simple event shoot. I just have to point a camera at a few things. and do a quick edit, that's nothing like that. You will spend time planning. You will end up burning the midnight oil because I did this. I spent hours, I would be up late every night try, desperately trying to get these projects done in time so that I get paid so I could make my rent. I have a lot of regrets about freelancing and a lot of mistakes made and hopefully this can help you avoid them because that's the biggest one. Treat it like a business. The second thing that'll really help you is kind of tacked on to being a business. Get contracts and get deposits. I didn't do contracts, I didn't take deposits and like I said before, I was scrambling to pay my rent. If I'd just taken a deposit, I'd have been able to keep food in the fridge and not panic about that and not try desperately to finish projects faster and do worse work just so I could make sure I was getting money in. And then I'd be chasing up these clients over and over and they'd be firing revisions at me. I'd be like, oh God, I need this job done so that I can eat and live and survive. And they'd be asking me to change things over and over and over and over. All I'd think is I need this job done. I'd do worse work and the quality would drop. And all I had to do was say, hey, revisions actually cost extra and you have to give me a deposit. And if you do a revision, you actually have to pay before I start doing the revision because that work takes me time. So you just need to make a contract that says, I will do this work. You are allowed this many revisions before this amount of extra money is charged and you are due to pay me at this time. And 50% of the fee comes up front or I don't even show up at your wherever your shoot is. So try to remember that part of it. Don't worry too much if you're handing down a client for money. That's part of the job and they would do the same for their clients. So don't forget that. I was often wonder, thinking, oh no, they're, they're gonna be mad at me. And, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> You're mad at them, they should be paying you. Make sure they do with a contract and a deposit. Okay, the next thing that I really should have gotten right was marketing. I did not market myself. Now, for some reason, I've managed to land a job in marketing, in content marketing. But then I didn't know how to market myself. I didn't know how to sell myself. I didn't know how to make a website with good SEO so that people would find me and my services. I didn't know how to get myself across to clients. I didn't know how to like make a nice leaflet or pamphlet and say, here's all the services I offer. I did a lot of stuff. I've done video, photography, podcasts, radio broadcast programs graphic design, I've done a little bit of everything in the content world and look, that's great, that's helped me become now a director of content for a, a company, but in the freelance world, I had no idea how to get that across. I had no idea how to market myself and sell myself and really get across to clients that, hey, I'm the person for the job that you're offering and you should be paying me accordingly and you should be hiring me over somebody else and I am worth this amount of money more than someone else who, who isn't as good as me. And you need to know how to get that across to clients. So learn about marketing, learn how to sell yourself, learn the words that marketers use, learn the, learn the approaches marketers use to get people to think of their products because you are your product in the right way. If you could do that, you'll have lots and lots of success. The final thing that I should have done right as a freelancer that I really messed up was one that, it seems pretty simple, but I should have got my taxes right, all that, the numbers and stuff. I spent like, a, I spent a week every year just pouring through receipts trying to make sure I was doing all this properly. All I had to do was hire an accountant. It's not that expensive. I'd be buying gear that costs way more than an accountant would be to do this at the end of the year. So what on earth was I thinking? I'd have an extra piece of kit that I never used and I'd spend a week doing my own accounts badly wrong in a spreadsheet. I had no idea how to do that stuff. I, now I probably could do it and I'd still hire an accountant because they're gonna be better at it and they will in the long run save you money. I cannot recommend hiring an accountant enough. If there's one thing you do at the start of your journey as a freelancer, as a content creator, once you start seeing money come in, 
put some aside for an accountant. They will tell you how much to then put aside for taxes and you will not fall into any trouble. And that is very important. And it is a load off your mind and a stress away from you. And that's more time spent creating. In fact, the more you can get rid of all those kind of tasks, the more time you can spend working on your creativity and your talent and use your skills. And that is so much more important. That's gonna be so much more impressive to a client. So those are the big reasons I failed as a freelancer. I didn't set myself as a business. I didn't market myself. I didn't have any idea how to deal with clients at all. I mean, just coming from like a working class background, you just don't know this stuff. You've never dealt in business in that way. I'd gone to college and studied how to make things. I hadn't studied how to make things and be a business person. I'd never learned any of that. If you've got any of those skills, you have an enormous leg up over everyone else making content, especially people looking for clients. So learn those things before you start or as soon after you start and you will have a much better time and you'll be able to charge more money, you'll be able to make more money, you'll be able to find more clients and get an accountant. Okay, just trust me. I, I, I need you to just go down and leave a comment and say, I will get an accountant. I, would, I just need, I need to know you're gonna do that because trust me, you will regret it if you don't. And if there's any like people who've been doing this kind of stuff for longer, who have any more tips or advice for people in the comments, for people starting out, drop, a, drop your advice in the comments, let people know. And if you like this video, subscribe. I'll try and drop some more life lessons and mistakes I made along the way to um, eventually a career in content.